Hello and welcome. You're watching AD4 TV Radio News Update coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Adirayo Senami. The National Coordinator of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Sani Aliu, on Tuesday advised those above 55 years of age to stay away from congregational worship centers. This is to protect them as vulnerable members of the society. He said this in reference to the federal government's lifting of the ban on worship centers and easing lockdown measures to allow offices resume operations from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Meanwhile, the government of Tunisia on Monday announced that it will reopen its maritime land and air borders on the 27th of June to save the tourism industry. This makes Tunisia the first Arab country to reopen its borders. The government will also allow the movement between cities within the country from Thursday. Tunisia has so far recorded 1,070 cases of coronavirus infections and 48 deaths. Sudan has sworn in Major General Yassin Ibrahim as its new defense minister on Tuesday in Khartoum, following the death of the former defense chief, General Gamal al-Din Omar, who died from a heart attack in March. The new defense minister, who came out of retirement to take the position, was sworn in before the head of the ruling sovereign council. General Abdel Fattah Buran, Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, and the country's chief judge, Nimat Abdullah. In another development, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and opposition leader Juan Guaido have reached a consensus to raise funds for the fight against COVID-19. Information Minister Jorge Rodriguez on Tuesday said the one-page agreement was signed on the 1st of June between the health minister Carlos Alvarado, Dr. Julio Castro, who leads the National Assembly's Commission on COVID-19, and the Pan-American Health Organization. He added that the parties will solicit funding to cover a range of responses from improving testing to acquiring more protective gear and launching public health messaging campaigns, amongst others. After 19 days without a Minister of Health, the Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro Wednesday officially appointed Army General Eduardo Pazuello as Interim Health Minister to succeed Nelson Teach, who resigned on the 15th of May. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Brazil has had two health ministers, Luiz Mandetta and Nelson Teich. Mandetta was dismissed on the April 16th for disagreeing with the President's handling of the pandemic, while Teich resigned less than a month in office for the same reason. Moving on to Europe, no fewer than 397,000 people lost their jobs in the European Union by the end of April, raising the unemployment rate in the 27 country alliance by 0.2% after most European countries imposed coronavirus containment measures. The European Union's official statistics on Wednesday show that the unemployment rate rose by 6.4% in March to 6.4% in April 2020. And across the world, data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows that the Australian economy shrank in its last quarter and is expected to hit its first technical recession in three decades as entire business sectors shut down to fight the coronavirus. When compared with the last three months of 2019, Wednesday's data shows the economy contracted by 0.3% when the first quarter ended in March, its first decline in nine years. And in Nigeria, the Nigerian Air Force has made history with the conduct of an operational intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance mission with an all-female crew. The mission, which was conducted on the 28th of May 2020, using the Nigerian Air Force Beechcraft King Air ISR aircraft, had flying officers Olua Bumi Ijelu and Jean-Vierre Mwagugu as captain and co-pilot respectively, with Sergeant Patience Njoku as the Airborne Tactical Observation System Mission Operator and Lance Corporal Godia Shaulu as the Onboard Technician. Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commodore Ibikunli Daramola, who discloses in Chise in Abuja, noted that flying officer Ijelu is the first female officer to become a captain on a Nigerian Air Force aircraft and that the Nigerian Air Force objective is to maximize all of the potential of Nigeria's vast human resource pool, male and female, to ensure the effective, efficient 
and timely employment of air power in response to Nigeria's national security imperatives. We'll take a short break now. When we return, 800 Nigerian health workers test positive for COVID-19. We'll be back shortly. Just stay with us. The president, Muhammad Buhari, has approved the establishment of the first set of 12 TED Fund Centers of Excellence, with two centers of excellence in each of the six geopolitical zones hosted by first, second, and third generation universities in the first instance in the year 2020. Those of the state universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education will follow in subsequent years. The focus areas of the centers of excellence, in line with the contemporary practice in the more competitive economies and technologies, are mainly in science-based disciplines. The approval, which came upon recommendation of TED Fund Board of Trustees and endorsement of the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, is to signify a major paradigm shift in favor of research and excellence in our universities, but also a demonstration that the federal government has decided to directly establish and fund centers of excellence besides the ones funded by the World Bank, being the African Centers of Excellence. Details of the operations and guidelines for the inaugural TED Fund Center of Excellence are to be issued issued by the fund. Signed, Buhari Mikailu, Director, Physical Infrastructure Development for the Executive Secretary. Welcome back. You're watching 84 TV Radio News Update. Iranian scientist Sirius Azgari is back in Iran after being released from prison by the United States. A U.S. court had last November cleared Azgari of charges of stealing trade secrets in 2016. While he was on an academic visit, to Ohio from Tehran's Sharif University of Technology. The Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Abbas Mousavi on Tuesday denied as Gary's release was part of a prisoner exchange and said he was freed after being exonerated, adding that his return was delayed because he tested positive for COVID-19. And back in Africa, Gambia's foreign ministry has demanded a transparent and credible investigation by the United States into the death of its citizens, Mamadou Sisse, in Atlanta on the 29th of May. Son of a Gambian diplomat, Sisse was shot by a police officer in a car chase. The ministry added that a Gambian embassy in Washington, D.C. is ready to support the family of the deceased and also to work with U.S. authorities to unravel the circumstances surrounding Mr. Mamadou's death. And in Nigeria, no fewer than 812 health workers have tested positive for coronavirus. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu, who disclosed this Tuesday, said 29 of the infected health workers are staff of the agency. Nigeria's COVID-19 cases so far have surpassed 10,000 with 314 deaths and 3,239 recoveries. The United Kingdom has launched a trial to see if ibuprofen can treat severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, one of the complications of COVID-19. The trial is headed by King's College London, the London Research Hospital, in collaboration with the pharmacy school organization, The Seek Group. Researchers say the drug differs from standard ibuprofen and is already licensed for use in the United Kingdom to treat other conditions. And that's it on 84 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.84tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at 84 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at 84 TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Adirayo Senami.